You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. In today's episode, we got some live questions asked by listeners. They called in, asked us a question, and we helped them out. That happened in the back half of the episode. But the front half is the intro portion. This is where we talk about current events. We have a lot of fun conversation. We also mention our sponsors. So let me give you a breakdown of today's entire episode. We open up by talking about protein rice. Believe it or not, if you make your rice with bone broth, our favorite is Kettle and Fire, you'll have rice that's got a lot of protein in it and it tastes delicious. By, delicious. by the way, Kettle and Fire, in our opinion, makes the best bone broth. It's, of course, made with real ingredients. It's super convenient. You just warm it up. Rich in collagen protein. So if your protein is low, it's you can drink the protein or do what I did and make the protein rice. And uh, because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount on their products. Just go to kettleandfire.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. Then we talked about our diets over the weekend and Adam's disgusting diet over the weekend. Actually, <laughs> he had a lot of wieners Gobbling in his mouth. Gobbling some wieners. Crazy. Then I talked about Adolf Hitler winning an election in Africa. I'm not making this up. What? It actually happened. He's back. Then we talked about somebody who worked in the Department of Defense saying that UFOs are real. It's like the third or fourth important person to say that. This is the weirdest of weird years ever. Then Justin dropped some science on Mars. Yeah. Uh, then I talked about a new form of kung fu that I learned about over the weekend called Iron Crotch. It's kind of crazy. Sweet. Sounds like uh, you need to rub some ointment on that. Uh, then Justin talked about his handyman skills uh, that he displayed this weekend. We talked about worrying about our kids. Uh, I talked about kids going back to school. And then I asked uh, Adam and Doug about using a sous vide to make meat. Apparently it makes meat phenomenally, especially grass-fed meat. Now our favorite source of grass-fed meat comes from Butcher Box. Uh, they have great sourced meat. It's healthy. It's got high. It's higher in healthy fatty acids and uh, key nutrients. It's also inexpensive because they eliminate a lot of the middlemen and they deliver it right to your door. And of course, because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get an exclusive offer. Go check it out. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash Mind Pump and don't forget to use the code Mind Pump. And I believe right now they're running a promotion where you get bacon for life, which sounds crazy, but it's real. Then we got into answering the live questions. The first question was from Spencer from Vancouver Island. He wanted to know uh, if he was a creatine non-responder. The next question came from Sadie from Nevada. She asked us what the best way was to improve her pull-ups. The third question was asked live from Jason from Florida. Wanted to know how he could improve his baseball swing. And then the last question we took was from Grant from Arizona. He wanted to know how to address orthorexia. Also, all month long, we've put together a bundle for three different types of people. We have a workout bundle for beginners, intermediate lifters, and those of you that are advanced. So what we did is we combined multiple workout programs to give you essentially nine months of expert workout programming. Then what you do is you go to mapsdecember.com, go to the site, find the bundle that works best for you. So if you're a beginner, you're going to want to do the new to weightlifting bundle. If you're intermediate, you're going to want to do the body transformation bundle. And if you're advanced, you do the New Year's Extreme Intensity Bundle. By the way, all of them include one year free access to our private forum. So if you have any questions or you need support, go to the Mind Pump private forum. It is an exclusive group that you will have, again, access to for free for a year. Ask any questions. We have a lot of trainers and fitness enthusiasts on there, as well as myself, Adam, and Justin, who periodically make appearances. Now, all these bundles are discounted tremendously. Okay, So normally, if you were to enroll in one of these programs without this promotion, you'd spend over $300 or close to $300. All of them are far, far less. Go to mapsdecember.com. Find the bundle that works best for you and your goals. Sign up. All of them come with a 30-day trial. So in other words, you can sign up, follow the programs. If they don't blow your mind, you get a full refund. One more time, it's mapsdecember.com. Protein rice is back, boys. Yes, it is. Protein what? rice is back. It's that time of year. This is a great, what a great way to sneak in uh, 20 to 30 grams of protein into rice. Yeah. You More make it, digestible. You make it with uh, bone broth. Did you make that recently? Yep. You did? Yep. You get the, the you pick your flavor or whatever. I like the beef, the kettle on fire. Instead of water, you use bone broth. Add, I like to make it salty. Maybe add some butter. And you basically have rice, protein rice. I'm going to have to do that to rice. Courtney's been making a bunch of, of her own bone broth lately and just storing it. So we're uh, ready. 
Mm, to good. apply it. Are you guys? So she's making it on her own. Where she puts yeah, the she's bones making it on her own. Yeah, I love it. Oh, I know. I that's know. A, it's that's a good a, winter treat. Dude. That's a waste when we have sponsors that send it to us for free. Well, it is. <laughs> but also, it's what I've been doing. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, how, how has you guys? It could be an easier process. How is how's your guys' diet been through the holidays? What's uh, are you good? You bad? You kind of like whatever? How's how's everybody doing? Oh, that's. I feel like you're targeting me right now. Uh, I'm not, dude. You just you look good right now, bro. I I you look full. It's the um. You're like two twenty five right now. No, it's no. those cheap yeah. shirts that you keep buying that don't fit you really well. That doesn't it doesn't do well when it's you're not, getting bulky. It's not that cheap. <laughs> it's dude. I'm <laughs> I haven't weighed. I'm two twenty right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know the last time I weighed two twenty, I think it was like nine years ago. It's been a long time. Really? Wow. Yes. Not since we've been not since we've been podcasting. No. This no. is the, so. This is the this thickest is the beefiest you've been. you've been. Yeah, dude. I'm I'm uh, I'm entering into cake tat- uh, ca- uh, category. Mm. Now I'm the I'm the cake stirrer. My 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 I don't furthest even myself, my so. furthest back memory of you is actually all beefed out. Uh, for sure, even bigger than what you oh, are. Oh, at, right at twenty four hours. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was two thirty, two thirty five. Yeah, as I say, I, rem- <laughs> That's good times. I remember and and small waist. You know, you had a you small heavy. waist, and then the, like you had you look like you, you did. You were arms. really looking looking at me. <laughs> well, you wore that. Uh, you wore that same I'm white, you even. that white polo shirt all the time. Ice. That was your like your. You felt good. I can tell. Oh, that, that was the um, that was the company uh, uniform. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you wore that white one all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, medium. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, <laughs> it looked, looked like it was spray painted. Hey, on my that's body. one thing they did well. Those those unis were a, a nice snug fit. Oh, no, yeah, they did. They were definitely. Yeah. Uh, how was your diet, Adam? Uh, pretty good, minus the uh, four Wiener Schnitzel corn dogs last night. Whoa! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Wiener Schnitzel is still available. I haven't. That's had, like the. I, Fast food of fast food. So Dude. we were driving. We were driving home last night. That's like if you're going to McDonald's and you're like, I don't. It's too fancy. Yeah, I want to go somewhere too else. Too classy. You know. Uh, so Katrina and I both have memories of Wiener Schnitzel with our like uh, grandparents, and like they used to do it when they were little kids. And so it, it's like a shared like story. We've talked about it. We've act, you know it's actually funny. How weird is it? So we, Katrina and I have been together for ten years. This was the first time we ever had wiener essential together. Wow. I, I can't believe I didn't even. That's make, a moment. Right I know there. we should have made yeah. it special. So we were driving home last night. From, so did you drive through? Because they have the most nah, unique not the, buildings. Know, yeah, not the yeah, one with the, the with big. The big. Yeah, it's like a big. Uh, uh, looks like triangle. Looks like you just drive a roof. Right through it. Yeah, it's like a roof. The, you're think driving th- through a roof. Thank Doug, you. And ask Doug. He's the uh, fast food historian over here. What? <laughs> um, wasn't that a different uh, a different place that used to drive through and they turned it converted them into Wiener Schnitzels or was it originally Wiener Schnitzels? I have that? no idea. You don't know? No, I. Why would Doug know that? <laughs> he's uh, first I, off. He's a, he's first off, I he's grew a, up in he, Seattle area and I don't think we had Wiener Schnitzels. Oh, up there. this whole time I thought you were a Wiener connoisseur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I'm afraid not. No. Sorry to disappoint. He's always. I mean, that's what it did. Always he, requested. That's what it, it says in your search history. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> interesting. Right. So what? So what the hell made you go there? It, it was just okay. So. Last night, which I was trying to tell the story here, I was driving home last night from uh, Truckee, and we got caught in a storm. So it was like, well, we we were on the road for a long time. Uh, the idea was that we we had like an early dinner, hit the road, f- thinking that would be the last time we ate, but we sat in the car for you know several hours. And when we started to come down the hill from Donner Pass. Katrina's like, oh man, I'm really hungry. I'm like, yeah, I'm really hungry too. But it's like 10 o'clock at night. There's like nothing. And she's like, well, let's find something really good. And I'm like, you know, listing off things that are coming up. And she's like, that I'm like, you're getting all picky right now. Like, you're gonna, you're, we're not gonna find something healthy at 10 o'clock. And we drove by a wiener snitch. And I'm like, you know, it sounds good as a corn dog right now. And she goes, that does sound good. Oh my god! <laughs> so that just it never aligns. This is one of the things I love about having like a a you know a health conscious partner, right? That it rarely ever aligns that both of us want the same like bad thing and it's always kept us pretty so when it does happen oh I feel you go, you're way over yeah i feel like yeah it's like i have to do it i'm like you know never has this ever happened in 10 years that we both want a corn dog so i felt like wiener snitchel here we come yeah it's funny because i i remember the last time i had one was at the boardwalk when i was some people like flew in from i think it was from ireland some of our relatives and, and we had to take them down and do the whole tourist thing and it was like dude i haven't had like a corn dog in forever if it's like actually made you know and fried and everything not like the costco warm it up kind of you know corn dogs epic how is how, what's wieners like uh, wiener stitchel's uh protocol they're not like are they frozen and then reheated don't ruin it for no me idea. i have no idea dude so hold on i so felt like were, it was like a like a like five a star one? yeah it felt like a five star, five star so you ate four wiener. four yeah why you say like it's a lot it's not a lot oh it's a lot it's a lot of, i'm yeah, a growing I mean, boy dude yeah. come on i'm freaking i don't mean like a lot of food yeah. i mean it's a lot of it's a lot of wieners wiener schnitzel oh really yeah do you have how was your tummy afterwards actually okay 
Yeah. Wow. Now, I didn't have it with fries or soda or anything else. Um, oh, cool. You're looking at the history on this. Is it? Is it? I wonder what the macros on a corn dog are. 250. Oh, you looked it so up? Of course I looked it up. You Hold know? on. 250 each? Yeah. And what? how many grams of protein? Uh, I want to say 8 to 12. I can't remember. No, it was, yeah, it was like 8. It wasn't that many. That's not bad. So you had 1,000 calories, 30, almost 40 grams of protein. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think it was 8. I think it was 8 grams. Now you do the whole ketchup? Do you like, or you Mustard. Playing? You Just mustard. Just mustard. Wow. Yeah, I don't Ugh. like ketchup. So do you like, no. so here, I never had Wiener Schnitzel. For whatever reason, it just seems. Really? Never. Huh. Now, and there's one by my house. I was I, so off about you and Doug. I thought you guys were big wiener guys. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I am a big not. wiener guy, but not. <laughs> Almost set that up. So, I know, thanks. <laughs> so, hold on a second. I, I have had hot dog on a stick. Oh, that's better. Okay. Yeah, that's I'll like a, then. Yeah, that's like the um, you know, that's the fancy corn dog. Well, they do it right in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Fancy. They dip it. Yeah, it's fancy. Now, here's the other that's question I have. Fancy. Cool hats. Because I'm already I'm already on the boat. I'm already on the train. I'm already on the big boy train, so now I'm kind of thinking this might be interesting. I wonder if their if their corn dogs are gluten free because it's corn. Is it gluten free? Because then I can then for I don't sh- think so. I think they're mixed with some yeah. flour. Ah, oh, forget it. Probably. Sorry, that's, that stops me. That idea. What do you? What is that? I only s- gluten free garbage. Doug, what does that? <laughs> s- <laughs> yeah. What's that say about Extra the history of the the buildings? Yeah, it was well. I don't doesn't really say anything about the buildings, but they were founded in 1961, and they sell 120 million hot dogs a year. Wow. Apparently, this guy was an employee of Taco Bell and broke off and did his own thing. Oh, wow. So that's how that happened, huh? Brilliant. See, I, I thought originally- He worked for Taco Bell, and then he made this. Yeah. So it wasn't a German immigrant <laughs> that started this? <laughs> I'm disappointed. His yeah. name's John Gallardi. <laughs> Sounds more Italian, maybe. Oh, that <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. He tricked us. Is it ever? Is it ever Played like off that? our emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Wiener Schnitzel. It's Wiener Schnitzel. I always feel like- you work at Taco yeah, Bell? It's not even authentic. I always feel like anybody that makes something like that, they, it's because they went to another country, they t- they said they had it, and they want to bring yeah. it back here. It's really Whatever ever. stereotypical, like, yeah, like word they can find. Wow. Hold on a second. When Gallardi came to California at the age of 19, he landed his first job from Glen Bell. Who then started Taco? Be- oh, I don't know. Taco Bell was named after the wow, founder. Wow, so Bell. much information already. Oh my God. Sounds authentic as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a real Mexican yeah, I'm food. I'm Glenn Bell. It's like Olive Try Garden. My it's like the Olive Garden for yeah. Italy, for yeah. Italians. Oh, Makes me want to pull. Speaking of German stuff, do you guys know Adolf Hitler won an election? What? Wait, yeah, dude. This wait. Side, I read this. I know you guys are like huh? the the deceased. No, 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 no. So there's actually a dude named uh, Adolf Hitler. Wow. Uh, That's who, unfortunate. I know. Now, here's the thing. You you would think if your name was Adolf Hitler, you would never win any election ever anyway. <laughs> Like, right. that's the worst. You'd kind of hope. I feel like his parents named him and they're like, you're never going to win. Yeah. We're going to do like, this on They purpose. gave him, like, all the odds stacked against him. He's no. just like, I'm I'm going to win. No. Uh, uh, Namibia. Namibia. I don't know where that is. I think that's in an African country. And he won uh, an election um, in that country. And his name is Adolf Hitler. That's way too much for me to process. I know. I know. <laughs> so, he won. Can you, you believe won that? won in an African election? He must have been awesome. I mean, how good do you have to be to win an election named? Uh, Adolf well, this is Hitler? like a massive troll. No, he no? actually, yeah. he actually won. Politician named after Nazi leader sweeps to victory, but I, promises. This was this was his quote. You ready for this? He, he's African uh, but, gentleman. There he is, right there. So you know, <laughs> he looks. He doesn't look very happy, does he? No. Uh, here's his quote after he wins: "I am not striving for world domination." <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's contrary great. to what everybody may be thinking. Yeah, yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, interesting news, uh, uh, Justin, did you hear about the former manager of the Department of Defense, Aerospace? No, I did not. So he said, quote, UFOs are real. Oh, God. Dude, I mean, they're, they're really going full court press now, I feel like. So here's the question I have for you because I have never heard this much confirmed like ufo information where yeah. you have former israeli like yeah, from intelligence agencies from from military like it's all kind of like, never coming out now why like, has in the open this has never happened before i'm surprised it doesn't make you guys put your tinfoil hats of on and make you think are that you this, kidding me this, yeah, this, yeah. It, yeah what are they distracting us from right Bro, I, where have I have a tinfoil suit on right now yeah. yeah why okay so never has anybody out of any prominent position come out in any government agency ever said ufos are real Aliens are real. Nothing like that. It's always mm-hmm. been like, no, 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 no. Setting All of us, up for Project Bluebeam. I'm telling you, what? 
Tell me about that. Project Bluebeam. What's Bluebeam? What is that? No, that's like that's like one of my friends. It's like this crazy like YouTube conspiracy guy, right? Like he he showed me a video one time, and I was like, oh my god! Like there, it was all this conspiracy about basically they were going to show holograms like of an alien invasion coming oh. down. That was like this this whole like his <laughs> he was like, dude, like this could happen. And I'm like, okay. Well, all right. Well, seriously, what do you, is there something weird going on? Like all of a sudden they're like, are, maybe they're sprinkling it maybe in they just to test us. Maybe they just think that we can handle it after this shit year. They're like, they're this like year, everything's this, already yeah, fucked. This year's yeah. so fucked. Let's just let it get it out now because yeah. they've been talking about it for like two decades. The aliens like, are going to come. And we're going to have to let them know. We're going to have to let them know. Pretty soon here they're going to be here, and they're like, this no, it's not the right time. No, it's not the right time. And then 2020 comes around. They're like, you know what? Fuck it. Just throw it on there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying everybody will be like, no big deal. Don't everything else, everything. everything else is so bad. You know, it's like your, your wife in the kitchen sink. It's like your wife catches you cheating on her, and they're like, oh, I did drugs too, by the way. Just yeah. Might as well throw it in there. <laughs> yeah, I can't get it's it out. Not big of a deal anymore. No, but I mean, my theory. It almost feels like they're testing, like to see people's reactions uh you know but are these from legitimate sources because it's like i i'm seeing all this news coming out from that but then i i see it from sources where i'm like is this is this true or is this just like they're bringing up articles to just kind of get attention i don't know dude you know? these are these are real people though this is the this is a, a real dude from the department of defense and then they had the guy from i forgot what agency in israel who came out and said that mm -hmm. we're actually that we were working with we're a part of a galactic uh, federation <laughs> yeah. and, and this is i'm like dude this there's is, more than one species okay, of aliens so we really are like you know in a sci-fi movie i know right is that what we're, that you know that's where we're going uh, I, I feel like justin's all excited about that i right? mean it's like like low key for sure you yeah. know like, <laughs> i've been preparing for this <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Forever, he's been practicing his elfish, Look, which you, is not really alien. Yeah, yeah. But. yeah, I've been working on my my Han Solo laser shooting. Skills. How did you like the last uh, Mandalorian? Were you happy with it? Loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Really it's good. come. It's really good, man. They're doing yeah. a good job. Yeah. I love. They're, they're starting to really gel and, and tie it into the to this new universe they're creating. Oh yeah. yeah. And wait, why did Doug? Well, Disney stock took off again. What was that about? Yeah. Well, they just announced that they had like how many Some of the runoffs? Yeah, yeah. There's like forty of them or something. They were they were they were banking. God, you gotta like it. See, I know. I They're, feel good now about our calls. Well, mm. I think it's a, it's a really smart move because you know they've kind of taken a lot less attention on the main story and, and, and started to work on all the backstories of all these individual characters. That way, they can introduce new characters. They can bring familiar ones back in, and it's like what they did with the Marvel series that was so yeah. great. Their, their stock soared also because they ended up getting more subscribers than what was projected. Oh, okay. So they already they hit all their so cute. So look that up. It was some great crazy number of how many people and then they're also going to i believe q4 or q1 of next year raise all the subscriptions up by like one dollar mm. oh yeah so uh i, I want to say they, they they beat their projections by millions and then they're also going to raise all the subscriptions up by like one dollar they also announced all what uh, justin's talking about right now so yeah, yeah, big moves. Well, for it Disney. says here so. Yeah, exciting. So one of the fir one of the ma the main investment firms raised Disney's price target uh, to 185, which is higher than what it's at right now, um, as of the you know, as of the the recording of this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were then, talking about it at like ninety seven, ninety nine was when we were. We were to, that's when I first snagged. That's it when up. we first, yeah, mm -hmm. started we're, looking at it. And everybody was like, "You guys, you guys are sponsored by Disney. You talk about it all the Dude. time." So I actually heard a, a crazy mm. fact. This was like space related, not like alien related, but. Uh, you know how you've heard forever and like seen in movies all the time how they've been talking about trying to terraform Mars? Mm -hmm. But I just heard today from an astronaut on Joe Rogan's podcast. He was talking about how that would be impossible. Why? Uh, because there's no mag like a really low magnetic field. And so, so like, the atmosphere would just. So it would just, yeah, it would just leave. Uh, like if they tried to. To melt, um, you know, the ice caps or whatever, they would just like go off into space. Oh, that sucks. I know. Maybe we just make. There domes. goes that. Yeah, we just live in domes. So it's like the the, the driest, most like you know desert like planet there is. Mm. Well, yeah. I you know what's that? What's that one theory that uh, humans or life in our solar system started on Mars and then left Mars, came to Earth? That's a right. theory. Yeah. Yeah. Really? You know how many theories theory. there are, dude? I, there's probably a lot. There's a ton. Dude. But yeah. unless there's iron in the core, but they don't know that. For sure, like mm. yeah. If there's no iron core, that never really had any like sustaining like uh, what magnetic is that? field. What does that tell us? If there's iron in the core, what does that well, mean? Well, yeah. strong magnetic. Yeah, get, me to, get me up to my nerd science here. That makes no sense. Well, to now me. we're not going to be able to explain it very well. Electromagnetic field. That's what <laughs> that protects us from all these like harmful like rays and radiation. It has to do with the atoms and the molecules. 
There you go. <laughs> that covers it. That, it's okay. okay. Yeah, it it makes total sense now. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of iron, I learned a new form of Kung Fu. Not I personally, but I, re- I learned that there's a actual from, from McDojo? legit form of Kung Fu called Iron Crotch Kung Fu. <laughs> Have you guys heard of this? Yeah, where they just uh, kick the shit yeah, out of Yeah, I'm going to guess there's a lot. So it's just I've like seen, soccer I've seen videos of it. Yeah. Oh, they, so I watched, I went down this rabbit hole. And so what they do is they, the, the, the Iron Crotch Kung Fu is not the real name of the Kung Fu, but that's what people call it. But the, the practice is uh, at you you strike sensitive areas of the body, so like the throat or the crotch. They're, they're most known for getting hit in the in the in the dick, um, and then you you channel your your chi energy, mm. and then you're able to withstand the punishment and not feel uh, any pain. So some of the demonstrations these guys do are insane. There's one where they take this log <laughs> on chains and they swing the log down and well, you guys aren't seeing this yet. <laughs> and and blast themselves right in the dick. And it's and they over and over again and there's no they feel totally fine. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, watch. Oh, here we go. A brick. A brick. Like, and he's going. He's going under. I mean, he's not even pretending. He's getting tainted. No, no, we don't need to watch this. Come on. (laughs) I get the point. We don't need to watch this. I mean, that's real. Yeah. But you got to see the log. Oh yeah, look at look at the big ass log. End up with mangled meat. Look at that. It's a log. That's a big ass heavy log. And then oh, what? Oh yeah. yeah. Why? Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Okay, <gasps> let's be real here. Okay, you're about to get into a, a a battle or a fight or I don't know a war, and some guy does that to himself. Yeah, and Can you know, imagine that? Like that's that's almost as, that's probably up there with you know if you've ever uh, people say like when you get in, do you strip down, take all your clothes off? You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. If all of yeah. a sudden you just start like pounding your nuts. Yeah. 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 It's the ultimate flex. Like imagine totally. if you and your boys because a big strategy in the past uh, was to intimidate the opponent, right? Mm-hmm. So you would you know, scream or you'd paint your face with blood or whatever. Yeah. But you imagine you're facing this group of this other army and you're like staring at each other and then they bring out a log and just blast each other in the nuts with the log. <laughs> you're probably going to be like, hey, like, this guy means business. Like, we need, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey guys, we need to have a meeting. Yeah. You know, hey, we need to uh, surrender. These guys are invincible. Again, I always wonder how these things end up in your feed, dude. Like, huh? What are you searching to get this stuff? I just go, yeah. dude. I, I like crush. Yeah. yeah, I like lear- I like you know learning. And then stupid. you and then you deny you're a big wiener guy, you know? No. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stop with that. How was your weekend, Justin? Did you guys do anything this weekend? Yeah, I was uh, busy. I've been like doing all this like fixing handiwork stuff. Like I went down to a uh, place down in Palm Desert. And so I drove all the way down there. I was supposed to relax. And the, the handyman guy that we like were going to have come in and all that wasn't there. So I just ended up doing a million things, you know, to fix everything up. But uh, I think there was a secret plan there for Courtney to just watch me work. She kind of like likes that oh, or something. Wow. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah. it's weird. You had a really yeah. good weekend. Now, do you do it? Saying. Yeah, Interesting. You, you wear a shirt or do you? Uh, I mean, you know, like sometimes. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> like I don't. 20 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> If it's hot, yeah. just a tool belt, freezing, yeah. just a tool belt, <laughs> no yeah. tool belt either. Yeah. How, do you hold, tool. how do you hold your hammer? Yeah. <laughs> Watch this, yeah. <laughs> clench it between what, the cheeks. Would you end up fixing? Uh, dude, the, the worst was the toilet because it was like from like 1960s or something. Oh. Like there, nobody had changed any of the stuff in there. And I'm like, oh my god, like that was the worst one of it all. I, I had to redo the whole thing. I did a little bit, of, a little bit of fixing too. So we, uh, so you know, we have the baby, right? So new baby, and he's sleeping in the bed with us. And Jessica's like, make sure everything's 100 percent safe, right? Everything has to be 100 percent safe around us with the baby. So she's. We have these huge. Uh, you guys, neither one of you see my bedroom, right? Uh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, one for, time. For, yeah, for, <laughs> for good reason. You son of a bitch. <laughs> it was a trick question. I knew. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but you weren't there, you know. I found, yeah. <laughs> Weird. I found, I found a hair that wasn't yeah. mine. <laughs> no, so we have these Just huge. You know, things. it wasn't me then, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like this can't be Adam. <laughs> it was. It was a huge. Uh, we have these huge mandala pieces. You guys know what a mandala is? So it's like a big. Um, it's like a big design. I don't know. Doug can maybe type like in my had it, It's on the back of your, it's above your bed, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, you've showed us before. Okay. So yeah. three, I heard from somebody. <laughs> yeah, so three huge wooden pieces. And ever since we had the baby, Jessica's like, make sure those are secure on the wall. I'm like, they're secure. They're fine. They're not going to come down. She's like, what if there's an earthquake? Whatever, whatever. So we're in the bedroom and, you know, so it kind of looks like one of those, right? So we're in the bedroom, and uh, I don't remember what. Oh, I took the pillow top off the mattress because she's afraid the baby will suffocate in the pillow top. So while I'm doing that and I'm doing all the stuff, mm. right? 
I'm like, look, they're totally secure. And I reach up to grab one and I just pull it you off the wall. Off. Oh my God, dude. I was like, damn it. Oh, dude. She's like, I told you. Anchoring things on the wall is, oh, yeah, it's a nightmare. Big old hole in the wall. So, so did you take it down or did you anchor it on? What took did it do? down. So there's three big wooden pieces. We bought this a while ago. Um, it's one of the more expensive things we have up on the wall. Um, and uh, two of them are anchored into uh, studs. Studs. Thanks, Justin. I forgot yeah, the word no for it. <laughs> I, yeah, said, I looked at you and I remembered. So. Yeah. Stud. I know words. I know. Can you act? Let me ask you a question. Can you ever use a stud finder without making a joke? Be honest. Yeah, I mean, every dad does. It's man. impossible. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it works. Every time. So, anyway, two of them were anchored in studs. One of them just had uh, like one of those sheetrock anchors, which mm-hmm. is what came off. So, I, I ended up getting a much better anchor. So, it's all secured now. Uh-huh. Everything's safe now. We're all good. Thank so, God. are you? Can you tell right now? I mean, it sounds like it from what you're the story you're telling us that she's going to be like the more overprotective, and you're the one. Ah, oh, he'll be fine. Are you more like that, and she's the one who's a little more? Depends. Oh, it does. Yeah. It so, what on, on what things are you more you know nervous about, yeah. and then what things is she? You know, it depends on the day. I have to say. So, like with uh, COVID and you know that kind of stuff, sometimes I'm way more paranoid than she is. Really. With stuff around like the baby sleeping, she's a little, but that's probably because she's the one that's most <laughs> suffering. tentative to her. She's the one who's suffering from not sleeping. <laughs> yeah. That's how, so that's the, that's one thing we have it. Like Katrina blacks everything out. Like, I mean, like our room, the baby's room. And I just, I've never cared that much. To, I mean, we keep the room dark, right? But I mean, she, We'll go like if we have like the like the alarm system that has like a little you know green glowing light like she'll mm-hmm. hang the hat over that she puts like tape over all the I mean it is like our room is like pitch black and I'm always wa- stubbing my fucking feet on something mm-hmm. on the floor in the middle of the night and I'm like oh god mm-hmm. does it have to be this pitch black and so her you know she believes that if it wasn't for that being that dark that he wouldn't sleep. And it's like one of those things I lose every time. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, you get up every night and you get him then if it's light in here. And I'm like, okay, I guess we'll you just, lose. I'll just mm. keep stubbing yeah. my toe. Well, yeah. well, he's starting to sleep. My son's starting to sleep uh, better now. It's so funny, too, because he needs to smell uh, Jessica in order to sleep. Literally. Has to be next to her. Yeah. Wow. Like he, like, And so there's a, there's a little hack that we're going to test. So she had her friend over the other day, first time, right? Start wearing her clothes again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can start wearing Honey, her clothes under under. <laughs> Honey, I'm wearing your underwear so the baby can smell. Nice. But she's like, you're at work. No, um, no. Her friend said this that her baby was the same way that needed to smell her. Mm-hmm. So she would put one of her bras or something next to the baby while while oh. the baby was uh, uh, in their carrier or whatever, uh-huh. and the baby slept. So we're gonna test that out. Yeah. We do that. With, we used to do that with my T-shirt. So he would he we put like the T-shirt in his quick when we were starting to break him off from us. Putting his tur- t- my t shirt in the crib. Or Did it work? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so awesome. I mean, that's a like a that's like a strategy you learn, like even with like animals and they smell their own smell or something they're familiar with. Like you make that area smell like that, and then they're they're more likely to relax, go to sleep in it. Versus if oh, it's man. foreign, you know, this all brand new bed smell for yeah. them, they freak out, you know. Yeah, I'll tell you yeah. what's great right now is just seeing uh my older kids bond with the, the baby and it's bringing the family together so well. Really? It's oh, so yeah, awesome. See. Yeah, we were um, going on a walk and my daughter you know, she hates it when I take them on walks. I'm trying to keep them active, right? Because they do school at home and all that stuff. But no, when the baby's coming, I want to push the stroller and she's pushing him and she wants to be ahead and She's like, you know, I'm like his second mom. And, you know, I'm, you know she's all excited about it. And I'm You're watching like, the kids. Oh, yeah, setting up babysitting right there. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, it, it warmed my heart, though, to see everybody kind of come together, you know, and it, it, the kids fall in love with them. Yeah, dude, the worry thing is real. Like, Courtney still will, will wake up and have, like, the worst. She gets, like, the, the craziest dreams and nightmares of, of scenarios and, and situations. I'm like, I wouldn't even have thought of, yeah. you know? And I'm like, dude, where are you coming up with this stuff? Like, her mind just goes to, to crazy dark. I'm like, okay, we got to do something about hey, this. Hey, speaking of your guys' kids in school, what what's going on right now with, with the schools? Are they t- announcing, like, what the rest of the year is going to look like? Or, I mean, public you- school. Not yet, but private schools, a lot of them are reopening um, either hybrid model where mm-hmm. the kids will like they'll take instead of having all the kids at the school at the same time, they'll have some like some of them go on like Mondays and Wednesdays, some of them go on Thursdays and Friday or whatever. Is your son doing that already? Okay, so his school opened hybrid only for a certain number of students, mm-hmm. but they're going to probably increase the number soon. My daughter's school in January, they're they're all going to go back. 
Now, here's the deal. Both schools have been partially open up until now. Both schools have already had COVID cases. Mm -hmm. That's already happened. So, and we get a notice, you know, when that happens. So, I got a notice. My daughter's school had a COVID case, and then my son's. Now, when that happens, does do they also they pivot for the week or whatever and say, okay, no one comes in this week, or what do they do? Everything's so like they know who the kids have been around, so they'll notify the parent. First of all, they know, they tell everybody mm-hmm. there's been a case at the school. Then they'll tell the kids, uh, uh, the parents of the kids who are next to or whatever the kid that had it. Yeah, your child needs to be um, quarantined. You know, quarantined or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the school actually shut down for I think it was a week or two weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like super, you know, you know. Yeah, huge. My, my kids' school they they're not planning. I mean, I mean, actually, they put out a lot of feelers from the parents to see who would actually be willing to bring the kids back and do like a hybrid sort of a model or like less um, kids, uh, you know, in physically in the class, but the rest remote. Uh, So they were asking us about that and we're probably most likely just going to keep them, uh, you know, at home uh, because we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff, like not necessarily in the area. So it actually works out for us, uh, you know, into next year, but I don't really see it opening like fully until probably next fall. So now you're so you're going to have an option to do like a basically homeschooling, and is that what you're doing? Yeah. And basically. have you guys decided no matter what the school does, this is what we're going to do? Yeah, we've just decided that to you know relieve the pressure of it. I know the kids really want the interaction and they want to be there physically. It's just so like back and forth, like you mentioned, you a case here, or whatever, and then you you know it's just there's this way too much uh, fear residing over all that stuff still, which uh, you know I think is more toxic than anything. Yeah, you, you know, I, I I go back and forth, right? Because I tell you, I see my kids and I see how much they're suffering right now. And here's the thing with kids, they don't know that they're suffering. You just yeah. see it in their behaviors and you see that kind of stuff. And um, But I mean, and then here's the other uh, reality, uh, you know, and again, I'm not an expert, okay? So before anybody freaks out, but according to what I've read, um, the risk for children with COVID is very low. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, they can spread it to other people. So when my kids go back, they're not going to be around uh, people who are in the you know the risk yeah, I think category. The, the teachers are the most uh, you know afraid of getting. Yeah, it. I've heard there's some schools where the schools back in um, and the kids are like kind of back to normal, but then all the t-shirt teachers are all uh, wearing masks. Well, so, well, actually, I think they'll make the kids wear masks too. But you know, the public schools, the teachers' unions are saying we don't want to be open in the public schools. Mm. Now, private schools are fighting. A lot of them are fighting to have them be open again. Well, but that's also because different. They don't, they, yeah, one they don't gets money. One, yeah, different one gets pay structure. Right, one gets money no matter what, whether they're open or not. The other one has yeah. to be open in order to get paid. Right? Well, because a lot of private schools are lo- losing kids because if you're paying a premium to send your kid to private school yeah. and they're they're Home distance school. learning, yeah, yeah then you're just sense. no, you're gonna be like, I might as well just do this, you know, in a in a yeah. cheaper way or whatever. So a lot of them are trying to get like so the I know the um, like the Catholic schools and stuff around here are getting exceptions uh, to be able to remain or to open up, but we'll see we'll see what ends up happening you mm-hmm. know with all that so I don't know yeah. little, little, at some point here's a deal at some point I don't know what this vaccine is going to look like but at some point I think it, it's it's out there we're all going to get it I saw you fell for the that vaccine post oh uh, man trap right there right in the forum yeah our forum did it I saw that it said I support it got me too for a minute I was just like it huh? said I support mandatory vacations and it had va- a picture yeah. of a syringe yeah and I was like excuse me right <laughs> and vacations the, yeah and the uh, vacations was like right where the, like the needle and syringe was at and so unless like you really looked at the post you just yeah. assumed. Uh, Oh, that's yeah. funny. I, I but saw I, that. I didn't get that. Yeah, right. I, but a little, it's clever, though, right? I think it's kind of smart. Isn't that interesting how right, right away when it's something like this, such a contested- You contest, assume. Yeah, it's a contested topic right away. And right, you have this right away. You assume that it's vaccine, vaccines, and you want to jump right at right at. It just shows you about your shows you about yourself, right? Like, totally. <laughs> hey, I want to ask you, um, Adam, about the sous vide. I uh, I'm thinking about getting one. So sell me on it. What's the so what's the tell me the whole process you put. It's like a it, what is it a silicone bag that you put? In the yeah, you can, and you can get ones that are like uh, uh you know the the one they come with are like kind of the generic ones that with, I think the silicone one isn't that the better one to use? Yes, that's the better one to okay. use. So you don't get the what is it BPA or whatever like yeah, that that's yeah. in it. So uh, what I like about it, it's similar to like you know crock pots or whatever. You can just like set a temperature or the Insta Pot and just walk away from it. So we can set it all up in the pot and have it set set, set to go off. 
Where I really like it is with grass-fed meat. And the reason why I like it with grass-fed meat is, first of all, grass-fed is always going to have kind of this gamey feel and taste to it and the texture. And it's it just may- not as fatty. That's why. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. not as fatty. So it's not, it, it's a, it seems to be a little bit tougher. It doesn't have quite as much flavor. And the sous vide just, I mean, it makes a steak to where you can just cut it with a fork. So what I'll do is I'll put it on the I'll put the sous vide or Instapot. I do use them both. This very similar, where I'll cook the grass fed meat in it, and then afterwards I'll sear it in butter, mm. and it makes it just amazing. And what it's, what I like it is you can't mess it up. So you set so it your, turns itself off when it's done. Well, yeah. So like if you you decide like you like your steak, you know, medium or medium or whatever it is, you can set the temperature. It will cook the steak perfect to that every time, and then all you're doing is searing it. And so. For somebody who's not like maybe the greatest chef ever, I think it's a great. And I and I've heard Doug, correct me if I'm wrong, that a lot of some of your really really fancy high end restaurants use this technique. It's I've heard that too. to make sure they they have a perfect steak every yeah. time. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. So that's now. Uh, there's also this argument that uh, you know cooking meat under over a flame or with heat or whatever produces more carcinogens. carcinogens yeah. And so now there's an argument. I mean, I'll argue that back and forth or whatever. But yeah. I know boiling food uh, apparently doesn't produce that. Right. I mean, that's not the reason why I'm using it. I'm but using the char tastes so much better. Yeah, I'm using it because it cooks a perfect steak. Now, what have you cooked in there? Have you tried a tri tip? Oh, I've tried? oh, I've done every everything that we get. Everything I get in my butcher box, I've cooked that way. Pork? Yeah. Oh no, I haven't done pork. I don't get pork though from them that oh, often. They yeah. have great pork. Though. I know you guys both talk about it. I'm not a. I'm just not a big pork person. In, Me neither. In, in general, I'm so. not either. I Bacon, never like. That's, that's that's it. You know? So I never like pork chops. Their pork is amazing. Yeah, I don't you, like pork it's otherwise. Really good. It's no, you've really talked really you've talked about them before, but I have kind of a and I don't I should. I think it's you who does it, right? You're the one who rotates the most with tries their specials all the time. Yeah, I like to do that. I've like figured out like what groceries we eat the most consistently and since it's being delivered to me, I get it set up to where it's like the same thing. So a, a chicken thighs, we normally get a uh the 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 uh what what do they call the their tri tip? They call it a no, now that now it's just called tri-tip. Yeah, they have tri-tip. They have oh, tri-tip. sirloin cap. Yes, that's the one they, you're talking about. Yes. But that's different. They also have a tri-tip. Oh, oh so I get the too. sirloin cap all the time. I get the chicken thighs in there all the time. And you've done all that in the sous vide. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm thinking about doing. Now, would it be enough? I'm sure they have different sizes, right? Is it enough to serve? Because I have my kids and. Or is it? Or is it, are they small? Like, how does it work? Is it any pot? How does it work? Yeah, it's in any pot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't know what the max though. I haven't. Uh, I don't think there is a max. So if you have a very large pot, yeah, you can put a- your sous vide in there. And what happens is the water cycles through the sous vide device and it heats the water to a perfect temperature. Say it's 135 right. degrees, which All I right. think is medium rare. Yeah. Then it just keeps the meat at that at that temperature. So raises it, re- it there and keeps it there. So it really depends on the size of your pot. As long as you have a pot that will fit that much meat in it, you'll be fine. Oh, you guys sold me. Yeah. I think I'm going to give a shot. So our first caller is Spencer from Vancouver Island. Full name and where are you from? Full name, Spencer, Antifave, and I actually live on Vancouver Island in up in Canada, in BC. Oh. So right along the coast, just like you guys, but... Uh, but colder. A little higher up, I guess. Oh, awesome. So how long you listen, how, how long have you been listening to the show? So I started listening about, uh, I'd say, a year and a half ago or so, and then so... Uh, I don't know exactly where you guys were at that point, but then like about a few months ago, I went back and started listening from the beginning again because I listened to all the recent ones, and it's actually so funny listening to like all your first episodes. Oh God! Yeah. Like the first <laughs> few hundred that you guys made are like definitely hilarious. Yeah, that it was a, a drunken blur. None, yeah, none of that was sober. Hey, Spencer, you look very young. How old are you? I'm actually 19. All right. Uh, a lot of people think I'm like a bit younger. I guess I'm just a little delayed, but I am actually 19. Well, you be careful. You be careful because Doug's a vampire. He's just he's sizing you up. <laughs> that's how he stays. That's how he stays hey, young. From a 55 year old guy's perspective, look everybody looks young at that age, right? Yeah. Hey, so so what's your question, Spencer? How can we help you? Uh, I guess the one that I was gonna ask is a is about creatine. So. Uh, I've been taking monohydrate for about a year. I haven't, like, I didn't really notice a lot of difference or really anything at all from taking it. I don't know if it's just because I already have, like, meat in my diet, which is something that I've heard on the podcast before, or if it's just 
that I'm not really a responder or anything or uh, okay. Or How- if it's just like the and also the other part of the question is if someone is not a responder to creatine, if it's still worth it to take creatine. Good. Those are actually great questions. How do you take the creatine? Is it is it pure powder? And then how much do you take on a daily basis? How? Like rectally? Are you asking? Yeah, what are no, you no, no. Uh, yeah, it's just free. It's just so. micronized uh, monohydrate. And I usually take about like three to five grams a day. Okay. So there is a very small percentage of people that would be called non-responders that don't notice much from creatine, but it's a very small percentage. Uh, I've worked with clients who thought they were non-responders. Then they went off creatine and they noticed a difference after about a month. So you might want to test that out going off for about a month to see if you notice any changes in strength or energy or if you drop a pound or two of water uh, on the scale because because creatine will make people gain a little bit of water weight in the, in the muscles. Um, and the other question is, yeah. how's your workout? Because creatine is not a miracle drug. If your workout's not great and your diet's not great, it's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna fix that. Yeah, I, I definitely periodize my workouts. Uh, right now, I'm following like I used to do like full body three days a week, and then I switched to like a bit of a like four day a week full body, but I split it up so I do like uh, squats twice a week, uh, and then deadlifts one day, and then good mornings another day, and then I've been doing that cycle for almost eight weeks but uh during the eight weeks like i've messed around like with changing intensity as well and tempo as well as volume so like uh i guess from listening to a lot of your guys's episodes i like have learned quite a bit for varying the like workload and all the different variables so so i think the programming is not too bad and i'm still like uh getting stronger and stuff so it sounds like he's doing a good job as far as that you know sometimes so this is the what how long have you been using creatine for now and then was this the first introduction to creatine for you i uh, i started like a year ago and it was that was the first time i'd ever taken it so i mean this is welcome to supplements right i think i think a lot of times uh because of all the marketing and how much we hear hype around a supplement people expect it to be like this i feel it right away or i see this huge difference um, I mean, yeah. even, even though creatine is, is one of the best supplements that's out there, it just highlights how little supplements play in, in the role of building muscle and burning body fat. I mean, it doesn't, creatine doesn't make that big of a difference that when you take it, it's like, Oh, holy shit, I'm on creatine. Yeah. You know, it's, it's probably doing yeah. its job. You just don't even really realize it that yeah, much. The only way to know would be to stop for about a month and see if you notice mm-hmm. a difference. Um, but I would, I would, I would bet that you're probably going to notice a little bit of a difference. Uh, as long as it's not bothering your gut um, and you feel okay, uh, after about yeah. a month, if you notice a difference, I would go right back on because there's still health benefits. You know, They're showing now creatine has heart health benefits and it's got benefits for uh, the brain, um, for cognition, so testosterone benefits. So I think most people probably would, uh, would be okay or, or actually get some benefit from taking creatine. Uh, have you followed any MAPS workouts programs? Because I'd like to hook you up with some to see if, you, if changing your program would make a big difference. Uh, well, I've uh, done all the webinars that you guys have gone through, and uh, but I haven't done any of the actual MAPS programs. I've been really wanting to do one, but I, I can't really decide if I want to do like anabolic or performance because I'm I actually do on the side, I do break dancing. I'm not sure if you guys are too familiar with seeing. Oh, oh, oh yeah. No, Justin was a b boy back in the day. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm like the helicopter I, it's just champion. Most people don't know what it is if you tell them that you do b boy. But yeah, <laughs> so that's uh, that's like my main sport. And then I do like lifting to complement that. Oh, excellent. All cool. right, so we're gonna hook you up then with both. We'll give you maps anabolic and maps performance. Start with MAPS Anabolic. When you're done with that, then go to uh, MAPS Performance. And then I would love for you to give me some, uh, just to follow up a month from now, if you go off creatine, let me know if you if you noticed anything. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely follow up with uh, that stuff. And then I guess the only other thing is there's probably 
Like, it's probably minuscule, the differences that you get from taking hydrochloride, I'm guessing. No, like, it's probably negligible. No, I'll stick with monohydrate. 99% of the studies have been done on monohydrate, and all the other forms of creatine don't have tons of literature supporting them. So I would stick with monohydrate. All right. Yeah. Cheaper too. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Hey, thanks for calling in, bro. Yeah. Thanks so much. I love, I love you guys' show. Like they listen to it every day. Like awesome. Whenever I have any free time. <laughs> awesome. And if Doug uh, knocks on your door, do not invite him in. Yep. yep. <laughs> Stay clear. All right. Sounds good. All right, Spencer, you have a good one, brother. I'll, yeah. You too. Thanks guys. Thanks. Stay warm. Yeah, Spencer sounds like he's uh, he knows his uh, his workout stuff. Yeah, I think he's doing good. Yeah. I you know yeah. it's it, I think it's more it just highlights how weak s yeah. supplements are when you're a kid and you take supplements the first time and you think like it's going to be amazing. Our next caller is Sadie from Nevada. What's up Sadie? What's your question? Hey, good morning guys. Um I was wondering how I could better my pull-ups as a female. So with work, we have a PT test and um, part of it is doing pull-ups, and I've been able to max out at like twelve. Um, and so I'm kind of hoping to bump those numbers up. That's, uh, that's good. That's yeah, that's incredible. That's <laughs> phenomenal. You know, pull-ups is one of those things that took me a long time before uh, I started doing like singles, doubles, and triples of like pull-ups. You just don't you don't feel like you're getting as good of a workout. But if you want to mm -hmm. build strength in pull-ups, one of the best things to do is to start doing them weighted and be okay with doing sets of one to three reps with, you know, mm -hmm. a, you know, a dumbbell or something that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's either strapped to you or you're holding on to, uh, that built pull-up strength more than anything else that I ever did. Oh yeah. That's great. Now, Sadie, is this for a test that you need to pass or is this just because you, you want to be a badass? Yeah. So what's the deal? <laughs> no guys, actually. So I, uh, I fought wildland fire on the helicopter crew here in Vegas. And so the beginning of summer, we have a PT test. So we have to run a mile and a half. We get a 20 minute break and then we have to do pull ups, push ups, and sit ups. And then we submit those scores to go compete against other L attack crews. Oh, oh, so you're this is a little competitive. You're basic, there. yeah, you're basically a badass. Okay, so here's the deal How bad do you want to win this competition? <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to give you some advice, well, but depends. like, like Nancy like Kerrigan bad, advice. like break an ankle type no, of deal. No. Like, like, what are you asking? No, like, how, like, how bad do you want to win this? I mean, being the only female, I want to credit. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you some advice that I wouldn't necessarily give to somebody who's just looking to get stronger and improve their fitness. Adam is 100. Okay. Adam's 100 right. Start training for strength. So add weighted pull-ups. But here's a second piece: the lighter you are, the more pull-ups you're going to be able to do. So I would avoid heavy lower body exercises and do some more endurance stuff for the lower body. Get lighter in the legs, and that should add a few reps to your pull-ups at least. That sounds awesome. Okay. Because I said about like 175, 180. So, yeah, le leaning out, getting ready for it, right? To lean out a little bit while also starting to load the pull ups mm -hmm. and watch what happens when straight you get into, get wait, into the ratio. competition. Wait, hold on. Let me get this straight. So, you wait, you sit at 175 and you do 12 pull ups? Yeah, that's yeah, legit. Really yes, sir. Yep. I'm about, I'm six foot tall. So, Oh, oh, you shit. are you are strong. That is awesome. And, and these yeah. are all strict pull-ups, right? We're not. Uh, they are. They have around. to be a dead hang. We oh, have to good. do a dead hang and then to the. Wow, chair. that's wow, impressive. That's, that is impressive. Oh yeah, yeah. if you that's eight more than Justin can do. Yeah, it is. Yeah, totally. At least. <laughs> at least. Yeah, I'm if, if you I do if, like two now. If you lost uh, some mass in your lower body um, and then did the weighted stuff, I could see you hitting twenty pull-ups. Uh, for sure, especially as strong as you already are, which is ex have you ever have you ever trained singles, doubles, or triples for pull ups? That's weighted. So I've I've tried. So I've done pyramids with a weight vest, um, and that helps a lot. And I can probably get about three or four with a weight vest being fully loaded. And then I'll do that, and then I'll take the weight vest off, and then do a pyramid just body weight. Oh, mm -hmm. that's 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 awesome. Okay, so when you're doing heavy sets with pull ups, um, you want to you don't want to train to failure, right? So Pick a weight that you could do like four or five reps to failure. And do three. And then do two or yeah. three and then rest and then do it again and do like six or yeah. seven sets. Here's another strategy. H have a pull-up bar somebody, somewhere in your house or around where you're at. And then, I don't know, 10 times a day when you walk by it, just do one pull-up. Yeah, body one. weight. Yeah, just body weight. One pull-up. And you'll get so good at doing them that you'll just- That's the sure. general advice I give for most people, but you're already being able to do 12 is already a leg up on, on, on most people I talk to about that. So to, to do that and then add the strength training on top of it, I guarantee you're going to see yeah. more. So, so I have a question for you. What makes you want to fight fires? Because that is a risky job. 
Um, so it's kind of funny when I got out of the Navy, I just happened to stumble upon the job here, I guess. And I just love it. It's such a great community and an amazing people. And we just, you know, we work our asses off all summer long. We work 21 days and we get two days, but it's so worth it. Wow. It's, it's so awesome. Well, now, are you the only one in your crew that's listening to the show or do you have uh, friends, that, other pe- co-workers that listen to the Mind Pump with you? We actually, uh, when we're not busy, I introduced you guys with my favorite show when you guys talking about the commandments of the gym. Oh, no. And um, so, listen, you know, when we're hanging out and nothing's really going on, we listen to a lot of podcasts and then especially like on our long drives and things like that. Awesome. Well, I, I do want to say thank you so much uh, for the work you do, uh, keeping all of us safe from the fires. And I would love to hear how you did with the test. So yeah. shoot one of us a DM after it happens. Let us know what happened. Awesome. Yeah, that'll be in May. So I really appreciate it, guys. Like, you guys have amazing information. So thank you. Awesome. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Wow. 12 pull ups. Bro, 12 pull ups at 175 and six foot. So she's longer limbed. Right. And that weight. Yeah, length. That is legit. She's legit stronger than Justin. She's (laughs) for sure. I'm glad you're not throwing yourself in that, too. That's that's good. That's why you guys are not fighting the fires out there. Come on, dude. I couldn't imagine. I want to see you do that. She's definitely carrying me, dude, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's exceptional. But, you know, when you, uh, you know, like I said, the advice I gave her, I wouldn't give that to the average person and say, hey, lose. You right. know, lower body mass, but when you're trying to win a competition, I mean, five pounds of leg mass would you especially you would more, if she's more doing it while she's increasing the weight. So exactly. if she's yeah. if she's leaning out and getting lighter on her lower half, like you're saying, while also but adding weight to like her her lower half when she's doing the actual She'll training. Crush. Well, one oh, other yeah. thing too, if she's not if she's trying to eliminate swing and all that, doing uh, like hollow body and like really like uh, you know making sure her body stays nice and rigid would be the only other thing I would add. Totally. All right, our next caller is Jason from Florida. Hey, what's up, Jason? What's your what's question? Jason? Hey, guys. Uh, Jason down at uh, Jacksonville Beach. Uh, just uh, wrote in to ask a question about um, how I should train in my home gym to uh, get kind of my uh, swing back. I've been playing some softball with uh, some guys my age lately, and I'm not hitting the ball as hard as I used to and uh, would like to uh, you know, improve my game a little bit. And then uh, also been taking up stand-up paddleboarding, and I'm um, interested in how I can train at home to, uh, you know, kind of work on my balance while still being able to, uh, you know, uh, paddle powerfully while maintaining my balance on the board. Let me uh, explain what that is for Sal. Sal, that's the stick, <laughs> and uh, the, it's a bigger ball that they use. Oh, okay. And then the the paddle boarding is like a surfboard, and then they 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 they, they like row on yes, top of okay. standing up. All right, yeah. thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Where do you notice the breakdown in those things? Like, and, and uh, have you done them before? Are you new to them, or is this something you did before? You getting? I played baseball, and then as a kid, and softball as an adult, but took a, a long break when I started having kids. Uh, um. So uh, I used to play softball, and I just used to be able to hit a lot better than I am. Um, I don't know if uh, my swing's off, or I'm just not as strong as I used to be. Yeah. So you're and, one of those. Uh, paddle you're boarding's one of, a whole new thing. I've learned. You're one of those assholes that come out to the softball field with a, with a, ba- a baseball background and beat the shit out of all of us weekend warriors. <laughs> <laughs> I got my ass handed. I got my ass handed to me from, from teams just like you, full of a bunch of ex baseball players playing softball out there, whip, whipping all of us dads up. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, that's about all I am anymore. It's just uh, just dad out there on the field. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. so okay, so uh, so a couple things, Jason. Um, number one, and I'm sure Justin will get into this because he's the uh, you know the biggest athlete of the group. I, I would say nothing is going to get you better at a skill than practicing that skill. So what you do in the gym, uh, and we'll get into that. You know, in terms of what exercises can complement what you're trying to do. But nothing is going to be in the gym that you do is going to be as effective as just practicing the skill of swinging and mm-hmm. doing the paddle board. Yeah, definitely go through uh, in terms of the skill of swing. Uh, do you notice anything like a loss of power? Uh, do you notice like any kind of hitch in your swing now? Is there anything different that uh, you, you can pinpoint basically? Well, uh, it may just be my swing motion. I, I think I'm hitting it fairly hard um but uh i'm not getting any lift on the ball anymore Uh, everything's on the ground so uh uh i'm hitting hard grounders but i can't seem to hit those line drives Mm -hmm. uh like i like 
Okay. And in, in, in terms of like uh, mobility and I know over, over time, uh, you know, we sort of form into these certain positions throughout the day, which changes our mechanics uh, with everything. And so that may be something to address in terms of pulling everything back into optimal posture and then uh, seeing if we can then uh, really drive that leg drive and get, uh, you know, that power back to, to really promote, uh, more of that, more of that power into the ball. Well, what about just, what about some of like your, I mean, you've taught me some really cool landmine exercises and some anti-rotational stuff right. for what he, what he's doing. Yeah. So a couple things, uh, so for rotation and anti-rotation as well, being able to really anchor your body down into that position, something I've worked with, you know, even getting back into baseball with, with my son, uh, noticing just how much, you know, kids really needed to learn how to anchor their, their body down and really be able to get that, uh, power through, uh, you know, through their feet and through their legs and getting those hips to really respond. So, uh, being able to really secure, uh, and, and get that core strength and everything to, to brace properly and then release with speed, uh, is everything. So once you just kind of go back and I don't know, do you do much rotational work or much rotational strengthening exercises? Uh, no, I really haven't been. I've just been doing, you know, basic lifting here in my home gym with the, you know, squat rack and barbell and some dumbbells. Jason, would you would you consider yourself tight? Would you say that you're a bit tight if you were to twist really hard or maybe tightness in your hips or the, the back of your legs? Yeah, everything's pretty tight. I uh, I listened to your all's advice about uh about uh stretching and maps prime. I can't I can't say I've uh, adhered to it too well. So yeah, I'm yeah. definitely kind of a bigger guy and, and definitely tight these days. I feel like performance, man. Yeah. yeah performance so would be huge. I've, I've worked with, uh, so I, I don't, I never, I never played a lot of baseball, but I did do a lot of boxing and there's a lot of rotation involved in the power. Oftentimes people lack power, not because they're not strong, but rather because their, their tightness is preventing them from really generating that twisting, rotating power. I would work a, a lot on, ankle, foot, and hip, uh, and then back mobility. That will make the biggest difference. As far as strength is concerned, first I would focus on mobility because getting stronger without mobility isn't going to make a big difference. But work on mobility, and then I would do rotational exercises. Uh, MAPS Performance has quite a few of those, especially in the second, I believe the second and third phase uh, of the program. You combine mobility with rotational strength, um, and then of course the technique and you should see a huge difference. Yeah. You really want to just iron out like any, anything getting in the way of natural fluid movement. And so to be able to kind of bring it back and, and do checks on all your joints to make sure they have nice fluid rotation and they respond pro appropriately. And you also have access to them and can brace and strengthen uh, to support your joints. Uh, it, it may seem uh, like you're regressing, but honestly, that's going to give you the most performance and bang for your buck out there in the field. This is why we're going to hook you up for free with Maps Performance because I think it, it being scheduled into your it sounds like you 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 know that you've heard it from us, but then you haven't implemented it into your routine. It's built into Maps Performance. You have uh, you know every other day is a mobility day, so you doing the mobility stuff with all the unilateral and rotational stuff that we have in performance, I think would be, you would benefit a ton. Totally, of and one last thing, Jason, the way you train mobility is different than the way you train strength, so with strength, you go into the gym, you lift heavy, hard for an hour, you do that you know, a few days a week. With mobility, you're better off doing 10 to 15 minute sessions twice a day, so frequency is very important with mobility. And I would suggest uh, attaching it to something that you already do. So uh, maybe like 15 minutes uh, before breakfast um, and you know 10 minutes before bed. Do that every single day. Within a week, you should notice a difference. Okay, great. Excellent, man. Thanks for the support, brother. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, one thing that I learned in uh, jujitsu and the very little boxing uh, that I did was I would train for – strength and performance in the gym. And I would forget that 90% of it came from the technique and skill, right. oh, yeah. you know? So it's like, I wanted to get better at a throw in judo. Practicing the throw would be anything I could do in the gym. That's why it's so complex because every sport has all kinds of nuanced uh, movements that really, you know, like uh, is very specific to that sport. And so to be able to unlock the movements is everything. And to, the only way to do that really is to, to make sure you have good mobility and totally. stability. Next caller is Grant from Arizona. What's up, Grant? How you doing? What's your question? 
Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, my question is, how have you guys helped um, male athletes who struggle with orthorexia? Hmm. Oh, you know, remember we talked about this with uh, with Jason on the show, right? Yeah. Did we get into that with uh, when he was here the first time? Yes, that's a, that's a really good question. So orthorexia for the listeners uh, is a eating hmm. disorder or a bad relationship with food where everything has to be perfect or healthy. So everything you eat, you need to it has to be healthy, it has to be perfect, and if it goes outside of that, it causes you a lot of stress. And issues, and I would say this is probably most common in the bodybuilding world. Very common. I was going to say, yeah, in terms of uh, which sport, I would think that was probably the highest. I saw this like you know when we. uh, This was really surprising to me. I didn't expect this. I I expected when getting into competing, I was going to meet all these people that uh, were the smartest, the most dialed, the had the best relationships with exercise and and diet. And it was actually the opposite. I mean, a lot of them they were what they were really good at was being consistent but part of it was because it was like an issue you know they were obsessed they, obsessed yeah. uh, with measuring weighing and tracking and if they didn't uh they would go like off the rails and so what i would do in coaching an athlete when i'd see this this i i've, I've talked to you guys about this off air um I would I would do uh, intermittent fasting for this reason mm. to help break that right. So if it's somebody who has an issue with eating outside of like weighing and everything perfect, challenging them to be like, hey, listen, we're not going to eat for twenty four hours. Mm. It would be it would be really difficult for them to do it because a lot of times it's tied to very similar stuff that you know Sal, you and I have talked about where. You know, I'm I'm afraid if I don't eat these foods or I don't exercise today, like the muscle's going to fall off, yeah. and therefore I have to be I have to eat in this these parameters yeah. all the time. Now, Grant, is is this you or is this somebody you're working with? Do you mind if well, I ask? It's, oh, it's 100 percent me. Like for the last I don't know seven or eight years. Okay. Uh, now, have you ever dealt with uh, uh, anorexia or bulimia, or is it just did you go just from you know re- regular to orthorexia or feelings like that? Uh, no. Definitely struggled with uh, anorexia. I didn't never got into bulimia because I hate throwing up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think I would I would go off the rails and then I would purge like with exercise or um, doing like the intermittent fasting approach. Got it. Okay, yeah, so I, I'm definitely not telling you to intermittent fast. Then yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. good no, question. No, that's why I asked you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so and that's why I asked you that. So now, of course, we're not experts in eating disorders. We've just worked with people um, with nutrition. Now, I would recommend that you work with a uh, professional in this field. So I'm going to speak from a trainer perspective, okay, Grant? In, in my experience, when I've okay. worked with people who have issues with food, uh, like you're saying, orthorexics, I would – and this is not the place you're going to stay, but this is a great place to transition. I would take your focus off of food and put it on performance, mm-hmm. okay? So rather okay. than looking at all your food and I need to eat the right macros – don't worry about that. I want you to look at your performance. How strong am I? How fast am I? What's my stamina? And then if you need more energy, you eat more. If you're too lethargic, you eat a little less. But focus on performance. And in my experience, uh, this is what ends up happening. Your obsession moves from food to performance. And being obsessed with performance isn't where you want to end up. It's just a better place to be uh, or to transition from. Once you move to performance uh, as your sole focus, then you can start to move more towards an intuitive eating point. But in my experience, I have to take that person's uh, obsession away from food. And I can't do that by keeping them Mm. focused on food in any way, shape, or form. It has to be focused on something different. And performance, in my experience, seems to be a good good place to go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, uh, Now, are you – what kind of workout are you following? Uh, Right now – I am doing like, um, well, I just, I've been doing kind of like a MAPS anabolic type of uh, training style where like for a few weeks I'm going uh, heavy with lower reps and then moderate. Right now I just started um, doing like the 12 to 15 rep range um, for most of my lifts. So it's, it's more... Obviously, you guys know, like, I'm focusing on getting a pump and getting um, some endurance in there. Um, and then probably within the next couple of weeks, I'll go back to heavier lifting and, and lower uh, like rep ranges. 
you know, I, I would I would love to see him run something like Mavs power lift. I was just going to mm-hmm. say that power like, lift would be such a great focus right now, just because it'll it will it'll take your mind yeah, off focus on the metrics. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. completely. So you'd be focused completely on strength, and um, I like that. I like what Adam said because it will ensure if you're just focused on strength, you're going to eat sufficiently. You know what I'm saying? And you'll probably be a little looser. Yeah. You might be a little looser with your diet than you would be if you were focused on aesthetics. Does that make sense? Mm. Now are you? Yeah. Sure? Now is that? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask if if you're regimented every single day, weighing, tracking, measuring, or do you allow yourself like weekends or anything to kind of uh, relax? Yeah. So weekends, uh, when I go and visit my parents, they're they're pretty. It's relaxed. Um, but then during like the work week, like I'll, I'll do meal prep. Mm-hmm. because I'm lazy as hell and I don't really want to cook when I get home from work. Um, but yeah, on the weekends, like, um, it's, it's always just kind of freebies. Uh, but it's not like, I don't, I don't ever feel like I'm going off the rails. I'm like binging on stuff. It's just, I'm not really tracking how many calories are in this mm-hmm. dinner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Does especially that like you guys know. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Does that, does that cause you anxiety or uh, cause you said that uh, you don't feel like you're going off the rails. Have you tried, you know, also doing a day here and there during the week? Uh, no, I haven't tried doing a day uh, during the week, um, but it doesn't, it, it causes me some anxiety. Um, but then usually because I'm with my family, I'm like, ah, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. it's not that big of a deal. And plus, because I'm so consistent with my training, I'm like, I have, you know, I think you guys could relate. Like you have that constant, kind of a reminder where it's like, well, it's not really going to matter because I know tomorrow I'm going to go and lift anyway. So Mm -hmm. if I have a little extra, it probably will make things go smoother in the gym or in my home gym. The truth is that's the right, that's the right attitude right there to have that during the week. Totally. Yeah. That same, that same idea of like, ah, it's not a big deal. I ate a little more. So I'm going to get after the gym tomorrow, just learning to transition that to the week, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I think the focus on performance, focus on strength and performance is a great transition. Don't end up there because being obsessed with performance can also run its own risks. But you know, I do want to add this. Uh, there's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel, and the fact that you're calling and talking to us about it mm-hmm. um, means that you're aware, and that is the hardest first step. I right. mean, to get somebody who has uh, issues with food to just admit is so challenging. So, uh, congratulations on that. Thanks. I I did have a quick question. Um, is Maps Powerlift is that something that can be done at home? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you, long as you got a bar, you got a barbell. If yeah. you got a barbell, you're good. Yeah. If you do, you have a barbell, dumbbells, oh. and a squat rack. I have three barbells, a trap bar. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I've got yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh, you're a lot good. Of gear. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. You're good, man. So okay, we're gonna send that to you. Right. Yeah. Unless you got it already, we'll send that over yeah. to you. Oh, get, get you going, man. Oh wow. No. I. Yeah. Thank you. No, I don't have that yet. Wow. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Excellent. We we appreciate you supporting Mind Pump. I recognize your name. I know you asked me questions before, so thanks for that. And stay in touch, okay? Yeah. yeah. Let us know. Of course. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right, awesome. brother. Thanks. I'm so glad that you asked the question. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. Uh, how funny is that? Like, my first initial, I'm thinking, like, competitor, and I used to interrupt the internet. And yeah. really, it was to, to make them aware if they even have a problem, right? Yeah. The fact that he is aware of it. And then he's also leaned on the side of anorexia. That would be awful advice to give him would to, be to be intermittent fasting. Oh, that would be anorexia. That <laughs> so, would be anorexia. Yes, but you know what? That's such a great, great question. I, but it's also, look, he's a, he's a male and he's try, and he's in the, you know, and he's focused and he's trying to build muscle. Mm-hmm. Nine out of 10 times, they didn't have issues with anorexia. And nine out of 10 times, it right. was what they would call bigorexia. Right. That's So that's, yes. I'm so glad you, but it highlights, this is where, uh, when we always answer questions, when we don't have the actual person, right. we have to say depends. Insight helps. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. it's, that's a total different answer if it's somebody who is like a competitor who has the bigorexia or whatever versus somebody who's actually had anorexia, completely mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. Uh, strategy on how you go about exactly. it. Exactly. Look, you can listen to Mind Pump uh, through audio, but also watch us on video. We're on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug at Mind Pump Doug. From a physiological standpoint, okay, when you have uh, people that intermittent fast versus people that don't intermittent fast, all other factors being equal, calories, macros, same types of food, similar lifestyles, 
doesn't make a difference at all, okay? But that doesn't mean 